The story of the Lewis and Clark expedition feels as old as time, specifically the time of the Louisiana Purchase. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson roughly doubled the size of the United States by buying the Louisiana Territory from France. This largely uncharted land spanned about 828,000 square miles and eventually became 15 states. That vast expanse needed to be surveyed, thus beginning the historic adventure of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. But it likely would have been a horrific misadventure if it weren't for their heroic Shoshone guide and bilingual translator, Sacagawea. Born sometime in the vicinity of 1788, Sacagawea was kidnapped around age 12. She and another Shoshone captive were sold to French-Canadian fur trader Toussaint Chabano, who declared them to be his wives. Two months after giving birth to her first child, Sacagawea embarked on the Lewis and Clark expedition with her infant son in tow. She used her mastery of the Hidatsa and Shoshone languages to help negotiate vital horse trades and relay other important information. Sacagawea and her baby may have been the only things preventing Native Americans in the area from perceiving the expedition as a hostile invasion. But she wasn't just an important resource, she was also a rescuer. When a storm threatened to capsize their boat and an expedition member threatened to shoot Shabano, Sacagawea saved the day by gathering important instruments, garments, and documents. Somehow, she achieved this feat while simultaneously taking care of her infant son. Survival didn't come easy for the members of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Rain and treacherous terrain conspired against them as they braved the terrifyingly slippery Rocky Mountains. While situated 300 feet above the Missouri River, Meriwether Lewis took a 20-foot tumble that could have become a much longer drop had he not stopped himself. A year later, he slipped in a narrow pass and narrowly avoided falling 90 feet into the river. Luckily for Sacagawea, she had lived around and was familiar with the Rockies. She navigated the danger of the terrain, but helped her fellow travelers traverse the Bozeman Pass in the mountains of Montana. While fending off water and gravity, the group also came under attack from bacteria, insects, and disease. Tainted jerky wreaked digestive havoc. At least three men came down with syphilis, and some historians suspect that Lewis suffered from the disease. In June 1805, Sacagawea contracted a nasty illness. For almost a week, she had a weak pulse, strong fever, and respiratory problems. Some medical historians have interpreted those symptoms as a sign Sacagawea was grappling with gonorrhea or chronic pelvic inflammatory disease. Whatever the truth of the illness was, she overcame it just like other obstacles. Sacagawea has been afforded a significant role in history, memorialized to the point that she's become a near-mythic figure. Not that that's always a good thing. That is not my name. Sacagawea. No. Sack in a box. No. In fact, she's so memorialized that somehow she has two different graves located hundreds of miles apart. At the Wind River Indian Reservation near Fort Washakie, Wyoming, a massive granite tombstone purports to mark the final resting place of Sacagawea. If so, then she died in 1884 at the ripe old age of 100. However, that tombstone may be gravely mistaken, because about 600 miles away is another grave near Mobridge, South Dakota that claims to be Sacagawea's final resting place. And if the burial marker is to be believed, then she didn't even reach age 30, instead dying in December 1812 at around 24 or so years old. William Clark wrote in his diary that Sacagawea died long before 1884. He adopted her two children in 1813, suggesting that Sacagawea wasn't around to raise them. Based on the age listed at Wind River, Sacagawea would have been 21 when she traveled with Lewis and Clark, creating a clear inconsistency with other biographical details. Given the timing of the adoption, it would make sense if she perished in 1812. An expert James Ronda asserted that most scholars currently believe that she was at least deceased by the time Clark documented it in his journal, sometime between 1825 and 1828. So how did this supermom and seemingly natural-born survivor expire? Some researchers theorize that she succumbed to a serious illness that plagued her throughout her adult life and may have been exacerbated by the birth of her second child, Lizette. History writes that she might have died of typhoid fever. Whatever the cause of her death, it's hard to imagine that she knew she'd be so remembered in the centuries to come. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite historical figures are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.